What's up guys, welcome to this week's video. Uh, for those of you that watched uh, my previous video, you would have seen that I just recently picked up my old MX-5, my Fastback MX-5. In today's video, I thought I would do a bit of a better walk around of the car, show you what's done to the car, a bit of an update of some of the newer things that have been done to the car as well. So let's just get right into it. For those of you who have followed me for a few years now, you would probably remember this car. I sold it probably like two or three years ago when I bought the BRZ. At the time when I sold it, I wasn't actually looking to sell it, uh, but one of my good friends, he actually gave me an offer on it that I couldn't resist, and he was willing to as well let me buy the vehicle back at the time when, in the future, when he was looking to offload it and get another, another car himself, uh, which is what's occurred. He's moved on, he's got another car now. So the opportunity arose for me to buy it back, and I jumped on it. So I built this car back around 2017-ish. Uh, I've got a carbon fiber fastback on it and a few other little goodies which I'll go through very shortly. For those of you who are new to my channel though and followed me because of the BRZ, don't worry, the BRZ is 100% staying. The reason you haven't seen it recently is because it did suffer some engine issues. To be more specific, oil starvation issues. I'm gonna do a full video explaining what occurred, how to prevent it yourself, everything like that very shortly. I just want to get the car back on the road and just double check everything uh, and make sure everything we've diagnosed is actually true and correct. As promised, let's get into it. Let's do a bit of a walk around, see what's done to this car. So let's start with the most unique modification done to this car. It's the Lightyear Fastback. It's a full carbon fiber Fastback. Uh, it's a roof and boot replacement. This Fastback it's made by a guy in Australia. He did a very small run of them. He did make them more for race cars than street cars. And because of that, the fit and finish isn't the best. One of my goals with getting this car back is I want to improve on that. As you can see, I've got polycarbonate windows bolted into the fastback. Now, the reason for this is the roof actually does flex because it's made out of a very thin carbon fiber. Uh, so putting glass in it would just crack straight away. And in fact, I tried putting these windows in without the bolts originally, and it did work for about a week or so, but because of the flexing, just as you drive and going over driveways and stuff like that, they actually started to separate from the roof, hence why I had to actually go through and put some bolts in. And as you can see, because of the bolts, it can form, I don't know if you can see that, but it can form some cracks. Um, so this is something that I'm gonna have to address pretty much straight away with this car, is just getting a few new windows in it. If you want to see more of the Fastback in depth, definitely let me know. I feel like I could almost do a full video just on the Fastback, the install process and everything around it. What I mainly plan to do today is a full walk around the vehicle. So definitely in the comment section below, let me know if you want to see more of um, how I got the Fastback installed. After the Fastback, the next most obvious mod would be the ATS DTC wheels I have installed. I believe these are a German wheel and they're in a 15 by 8 plus, I think 20... I think it was plus 25. Uh, the rotor in there is actually part of a big brake kit from Flying Miata that I'll get more into as I go to the front, but I've just got some Brembo pads in there at the moment uh, as they're a little bit better on the track and actually seem pretty good on the street as well. NB side skirts. So this is the other half of the Flying Miata big brake kit. Is uh, It's a Willwood big brake kit. So I've got the Willwood Dyna Pro calipers and their two-piece rotor as well this is awesome because i believe it's 11 and a 11.75 inch rotor it's actually one of the biggest rotors i believe that you can fit in the 15 inch wheels which is awesome for performance and wrapped on the wheels as well actually i've got nankang al ones at the moment these ones are a little bit old they're still good but i definitely want to upgrade to new ones and see how they go and then from there it'd be awesome to try some other tires in the 22545 range Oh, and yeah, that's that's the size they come in. So I've got a 2254515. Moving towards the front even more, I've got a just a. I honestly couldn't remember where I got this front lip from, and I'm surprised it's actually lasted so long. I think it was just a cheap front lip. I used to, if you can see the four holes on the side, I used to have a set of uh, carnards that go up there, but they've since been removed from the vehicle. Um, so. I'm definitely going to do something again with the front of the car in the future. It'd definitely be good to update the whole front again. I think it's got like a yellow tint on the fog lights as well. I've done a full HID and an LED conversion in the headlights just for better visibility at night. 
I don't like driving this car at night too much anymore, but this definitely, this upgrade that I had here definitely made it a lot better. If you guys want more information again on like the LED upgrade and which one actually fits and what works, definitely let me know. I've got a lot of information with LEDs and I'm happy to go more in depth on that sort of stuff. So moving into the inside of the vehicle, I've got a Nardi steering wheel on the vehicle. It's a smaller diameter than factory and so it helps stiffen up the steering or, or the feel of the steering a bit better. The Nardi wheel is also an awesome upgrade if you are a bit taller because it helps, like I don't hit my knees as much anymore. And also you can see it's a bit, of, it's a deep dish wheel. So it actually comes out a little bit further. Again, sort of just getting it for that little bit further away from your knees. I have a Miata Roadster short shifter in there. Not 100% sure what gear knob that is. I bought it from some guy in Sydney who's Oh, he's a bit of a legend to be honest. He posted up for an awesome deal for me uh, and it helped with a bit of the rattle uh, that I was getting from the Miata Roadster short shifter kit. Um, having the heavier gear knob on the end I found helped it or helped mute a lot of that rattling. Moving more towards the back here, I've got a Sparco Grid 2 in the driver's seat. It's a really comfortable padded seat, holds me in really well. And a very important feature of the seat is it actually fits in the cockpit area for an MX-5. Uh, a lot of aftermarket bucket seats aren't small enough for the space that the MX-5 has. So this is an awesome upgrade, fits in. Uh, fouls on the door a tiny bit, but nothing major. Moving on down here, the Sparco is mounted to a PCI fixed rail. In the back here, I've got an MX-5 Plus is what they used to be called, but it's called Automotive Plus now, is the company. And I've got one of their roll bars. I'd definitely love to upgrade this roll bar eventually for something that looks a little bit more aggressive. And I've also got the rear brake light for the third brake light mounted to the back of it, but that's something that I'm definitely gonna change and it's actually starting to peel away from it. So last few mods on this car. I've got a set of MCA, the XR, coilovers. That's a range of coilovers now that has actually been updated and doesn't exist, but it's sort of their more race focused coilover. As for the engine bay, I've got an aftermarket intake. I definitely want to get this updated. It's lasted a lot longer than I originally thought it would, but I want to get something stainless or something that looks good. Uh, and lastly, I've got a set of CES uh, racing headers. Now they're a local company out of Norwell in Queensland that they do a few headers for a few older generation sort of race cars. They've been around for many years. They're more so a local low volume company. I'm not too sure if they ship their stuff worldwide or if they just sort of sell to cars that come in store, but it's a full racing upgrade. So they do advertise like a five to 10 horsepower gain, whether it's true or not, I don't know. I haven't put it on a dyno. And the last sort of main major modification to this car would be a lightweight clutch and flywheel. And honestly, that's probably one of the most noticeable modifications about the car. The engine is so much happier to rev now than it once was. It doesn't really seem much easier to stall than it ever was as well. A lot of people don't seem to like lightweight flywheels because it makes the car easier to stall at low speeds, but I haven't noticed that at all with this car. Future plans on the channel for this vehicle. Um, effectively, I wanna track the shit out of it. I wanna use the car as a good seat time car to get experience on the track probably do like a beginner track day series as well of things that you need to take to the track, things that you should know about going to the track for the first time, all of that sort of stuff. So if you're interested in seeing that, subscribe, let me know what sort of stuff exactly you wanna know. In terms of power mods for this car, I do have something in mind. I want to get the BRZ completely finished and reliable first before I take this off the road and do any major work to it because it is so reliable at the moment. So there's definitely heaps more content to come on this car. But yeah guys, uh, tell me what you think. One of the reasons I purchased this car was so that I had a car that I can create content with when the BRZ is off the road. So guys, I hope you guys are excited as I am. Remember to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.